As I think quite a few of you know, over the last several months, I've been experimenting with the Wombo AI art generator, inputting various text blocks, including my name, but also my uh, dissertation, master's thesis, and senior's thesis titles, just to see what it would come up with across the various artistic styles, as they, they call it on the site, that they offer you. And the previous ones have been quite interesting. This one, in which I inputted the title of my master's thesis, Husserl's Passive Synthesis and the Constitution of Language, it turned out to be a lot more homogenous in look, very texty as we're going to see. So I'm gonna walk you through what we got. There are a few interesting surprises and I would say I'm getting to learn a bit more about what this, you know, I think machine learning is really a big metaphor. There's really no learning going on there, but what it can turn out for us. Now, I do want to say something else from the start. A lot of people have been engaging in commentary about, is this really art and how do we define art? I'm not worried about that so much. I'm much more interested in seeing what kind of images get generated and what we can say about those images. So I'm not saying that you know nobody could engage in that discourse. I'm just saying that I'm much less interested in worrying about definitions of art and you know is this the apocalypse or anything like that, and much more interested in the granular, what do I have in front of me? So let, let's take a look at the very first one. Here we have something that's, again, very texty. And I'm saying texty rather than text-like because it's sort of like the difference between truthfulness and truthiness as you know came out in the early 2000s. You notice as we like look at this, it's not actual text, although it does a good job in pretending to be like it. So as we scroll down through this, you see all sorts of things that are pseudo characters, as well as a lot of blurry stuff as well. I think one of the interesting features about this, as you can see as we're going down as well, is the stripe along the side with the beautiful blue and orange. But there's not much else to say about this. Let's look at the next one. Again, very texty, a lot more colorful. There's, you know, some warping effects going on with this. And then we've got these brilliant folding colors into it. But, you know, we look close again and, you know, the letters themselves or characters, whatever they're supposed to be, have color in them. And some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. You notice that none of them are actual characters. We do have this beautiful painterly folding of color strips into it, which I like quite a bit, but there's no actual communication going on there. So Wombo seems to be saying, let's do something. This is obviously a text. Let's, let's make this text-like. Here's another one, again, where we have a stripe down the side, but this almost looks like a pen instead, doesn't it? And the writing is a bit you could say less homogenous. Let's start by looking at the bottom and going upward. Now, notice the diversity of characters here. It almost looks like scribbles of some sort. And then we start getting this stripe up the side. And then as we're going through, we see less and less all the way going to the top. The things get smaller and there's less on the page. And we have something that looks almost like it could be a pencil or a paintbrush with a band around it. In this one, the next one, we have uh, something else added to the mix. Not only do we have these large blocks of color, which aren't characters, but kind of look like characters, we have things that actually look like Chinese characters. And I don't think they are. I mean, I don't know enough about uh, Chinese characters to be able to say definitively that these are not characters corresponding to something. But again, I think it's similar to what goes on with the other characters that we have. There's 
a character likeness, a verisimilitude that's going on here, but it's not real characters of any sort. And so a lot of computing power is being devoted to, to this, this mock-up, you could say. And as we scroll up, we see these interesting blue bands, we see these red blocks, and we see the uh, you know, seeming characters in there, but no real information being provided. So what we've got here is, you know, like a facsimile of a text, not an actual text. Here's one where we've got a new element to it, something that almost looks like a hand writing. Uh, and again, we have lots of, you know, lines and blocks of characters. And as we look at this more closely, we can see that, you know, this is all, of course, gibberish and doesn't mean anything. And it's interspersed with lines of just pure color and then lines of pseudo characters. And as we scroll down, Wombo fooled us once again. Is this a hand? I mean, it looks like it could be a hand puppet, but it's not really a hand in any way. And so it's a suggestive form rather than a depiction of anything. Now here, this one is really interesting because if you look at it at this top level, it looks like we might actually have like baskets of flowers or, you know, stars illuminated or, you know, this, these color areas interspersed uh, between the text and at the bottom, you know, they have some promise for, you could say, meaning. And here's the text itself. This, this one is really uh, blurry. Uh, there's, there's really nothing going on there in, in, in information wise. Now let's look at what we've got here. So this is, you know, there are some kind of floral shapes in this one as well as some star shapes, but it's really just blotches of color put together in, I would say, rather attractive, eye-catching ways. If we look at the other one, it's even more so like that. A lot more star-like things, a lot more uh, almost like textured paint coming off a paintbrush kind of uh, stylistics, but there aren't any, any flowers or anything like that. And we don't actually have any images that we can pin meaning to here. This one is a bit more promising. Now we finally start to get to things that really do look like things. And we've got a bunch of different what look like pages of text with characters on them. Very, very small. Now, if we start at the bottom, we have this, you know, rather beautiful painterly base and we scroll our way up. We have sort of a stem and it almost looks like it could be a habitation or like a tower, a lookout tower in the middle of text. Right. And we get to this kind of skull like thing, which, again, looks like it it could be a house. It could be something suspended in the air and there's even what look like could be little people in there but we we can't really tell and so you know what to make of this maybe this is a house and these are characters that are depicting you know the the sketch or uh, supplying some information then we get to something where we now have something not human but certainly human-like we have a face and it's it's over text and the text is part of the face, but we have what look like two recognizable eyes and a beard and hair on top. Maybe this is the Edmund Husserl as the uh, program thinks about it. So let's zoom in on this and we see this, this beautiful non-text uh, going on there as part of it, sort of like the, the lines on the forehead and on the cheek. And we can see that there is an eye and then something that's almost like a non-eye uh, just in the right place and lots of swirls of color. Is this really a face? Uh, that's debatable. Now, the next one, I think we have a face here. What do, what do you think? Would you agree? It certainly looks like one and it kind of looks like it could be connected to Husserl in some way. Pretty grotesque Husserl, right? And there's what appear to be maybe a statue behind and, you know, a piece of maybe pottery or an ashtray and in front. Uh, there, there's a little bit of writing. None of that writing actually means anything. And as we zoom in, we get closer and closer. I think we have there 
something that looks like an eye, but also could be a fly, you know, somebody wearing glasses. And then we have the other, the side of the face kind of smushed in with, with the colors. But I think that's a recognizable, close enough face. Then we get something really trippy. What is this? It looks like a street view of a city and maybe there's those characters are on a sign hanging in the air and we have things that look almost like books or tablets standing up. And so let, let's take a look at it from the uh, from the top down. So we've got this, you know, interesting looking kind of like a cityscape with a lot of maybe fog in there. We scroll our way down. We see this sign perhaps or tablet or something along those lines and then it fades off into obscurity along with the base of those statues sticks whatever they are obelisks now if we look closely at the what looks like to be a sign um, again we see that there's other than you know the possibility of an l and an o there's there's really nothing there it's just fake lettering, uh, fake characters. And, and the same thing on, on the sides. It looks like it could be, you know, some sort of cuneiform or, you know, some sort of Chinese characters in some parts, but I, I don't see anything really recognizable there. Then we have this trippy one, which we'll end on. Um, you know, it looks like a script, but it also sort of looks like organic forms penetrating into it and pastelizing it, we could say. So let's look carefully at it. At the top, we have, I mean, it almost looks like a map of, you know, an archipelago or a, a city's port. And then we have all sorts of, again, looking like writing, but not really writing, kind of, kind of a cool aesthetic motif. We scroll down, we see more and more of it until we start getting into all these, you can't call them blocks, they're more blobs, more rounded figures that are piled into each other. And you see something that almost looks like a, a, a finger coming off of a hand, but it isn't, right? And we get to the bottom of it and we have you know more and more writing and um, these rounded edges to it. And you know all of this is, is quite interesting because what do we have in all of this? At best, a few figures and mostly just non-writing, pretending to be writing. This seems to be Wombo's idea of what Husserl's passive synthesis and the constitution of language would mean. You know, is this even language? This is not language. This is not language about language. This is just images that ape language, you could say. So there, there is no signification going on here in ways that we can, we can see. There might be something signified to us, not in denotation, but in connotation with these images. And so once again, I think, you know, this is quite interesting to check out. I think we can read in meaning that isn't really there at all, and that's part of the human experience. So that's that's pretty much what I want to say about this, and I'm curious to see what other people make of this new set of Wombo AI art-generated pieces based on the the name, the title of my master's thesis.